Hello everyone and welcome back. To My name is Saqib and today we will be learning about formatting worksheets. Over here I have the invoice from our last lecture from Pets Palace. I've taken out all the formatting so now you just see the spreadsheet by itself. So let's try to add formatting and spruce it up so we can send it out to our clients. Let's start with the main table here. Now here we have a table that has a description quantity unit price and amount these are headings so maybe we should put them in bold so we select them all go up to file and hit bold and you know what it'd be nice if they were in the center of the cell so we hit the center button over here and voila they're in the center okay this is starting to look a bit better now we have the, at least the description quantity unit price and amount standing out how about we put put it all in a table so we select the whole thing like so and we insert a table and the way to do that is from over here there's a small borders section you can add this. There's also the tape format as table, which is more sophisticated and not right for this particular situation. So let's go with the borders and put an outside border around the whole thing. Okay, so now we have an outside border, so it frames it, the whole invoice a bit better. Maybe we can divide up each column in as its own in its own box. Again, we select the column and hit this button. See, this is the all borders button that we are using, by the way. Outside borders. I pardon. Pardon me, that we are using the outside borders. So let's do the same thing for unit price. Well, unit price didn't go all the way down though, so we should stop over here and not go all the way down to subtotal. We hit a thing here. And maybe we should put it this in its own box subtotal and again a line may be down here so now we just want to insert a line at the bottom over here and not the whole line or a whole box we just do the bottom border and, and we don't really need this bottom border over here so what we can do is select this entire thing and right click go into format cells and then go into border now this border gives us a, this dialog box gives us a better way to insert or remove the borders so over here in this section we want to remove the one at the bottom so we do this we click over here and it's gone and we also don't want the one here you can't see it but it'll show up in printing and such we don't want that to happen so we remove that as well and okay and see now they're gone maybe another one up here maybe we should put in a thick border up here so the style of the borders can be changed again by going into the format cells dialog box let's try to put in this fancy dashed line so we go click on this and we can click on this button over here to put it at the top. If we click on this one, it'll put it at the bottom. Let's try that out, see what that looks like. It looks pretty funky. Let's undo that to go back to our normal border. Let's just add one more line over here for quantity, just to be consistent with the rest of the thing. Actually, I wanna show you a new way of doing things. Let's select everything in unit price. Because if you look at unit price and look at quantity, the only difference between the formatting in unit price and the formatting in quantity is that it doesn't have a line on the left over here. This line is missing and everything else is the same. In essence, we just want to copy over the formatting. One way to do that is select the whole thing and use Format Painter up there. So you select Format Painter and drag it down all the way on this cell. 
and boom, that all the formatting has been copied over. This would have been true without even if and all of the formatting from quantity was missing. Okay, what else can we do? Well, there are a few important words over here, or a few important cells that should be highlighted, such as the name of the business, the tagline, the fact that this is a purchase order. There's a date function being used in this cell, but what the hell is, there's a date function being used in this cell, but what does 42094 mean? Well, that's just how Excel does dates in a general fashion. We have to add formatting to that to make it look more like a date. Invoice number, maybe this should be up towards the left. Um, there is the R address at Pets Palace address that is up here. This is the, the Bill 2 address down here. All of these things should be highlighted in some way. So let's get started. Let's start down here actually. So over here on total, maybe you should have a line just above total. So we select other or we and and we select other and we add a bottom border like such. We could have also selected total and added a, a top border from up here. But either way is fine. Uh, and these are all amounts in dollars. And same with the unit price. So maybe we should select both of these columns up here and have from general switch that to currency and we don't want all these zeros over here so what can we do about that we can delete it but the the problem is that these have formulas so you want the formulas should not show up at all is there a way we can do that let's find out let's see if it helps if we use a different type of formatting Maybe not currency, maybe we use, use accounting. Well, accounting is a bit better because it replaces these with the dash. And that's really the way you have to go about formatting in Excel. It must have an idea in mind of what you want to do and then just experiment with different settings and see the one that works the best. So up here we have a currency formatting, down here we have the accounting formatting. Maybe we should just use the same thing everywhere. We can use a format painter to copy the formatting over again. Let's try a different way though. Let's, let's copy this over the cell and then select all of these cells up here, right click and then we say in the paste options we want to select the one that does only formatting. So values, formulas, transpose, formatting, that's the one we want. And you can see it already gives you a preview of what it would be. And this is exactly what we wanted. So this looks pretty nice. How about we move the quantity column into the middle? So it's a bit separated from the corner line. Well, this is starting to look much better and very much like an invoice. The date. Let's try, let's experiment with different dates. We, let's go into format cells, number, and in the category, we, we select date. Now over here, we have many different types of dates, date formats, and which you can see up here in the sample. So this way we could do the Tuesday, March 31st, just the month and the, and the day, this one. So there's quite a few different options to select from. I think we should select this one. I like this one the best, but you can use any which one that you like. The invoice number is really far from this guy. So maybe we should put this in the left side. This purchase order, maybe we should put it in bold. And maybe we should increase the size so that it's a bit obvious when someone looks at it from afar, they know that they're looking at a purchase order. Okay, this look this is starting to look better, but the problem here now is that this is spilling into a columns E and F, and everything else is contained within column D. If we are able to contain purchase order in column D, it would make the printing easier. So what we can do here is we can copy purchase order from column D to column B or C. But another way to do it is to select columns D and C and do merge and center.
So what this does is it merges this, the, these two cells into one larger cell. Let's just increase the size a little bit here and we're looking good. How about Pets Palace? It also deserves to be large in size. So let's change that. Let's copy, maybe we want it to be the same size as purchase order. So let's copy the format over with Format Painter into Pets Palace. It's again the same size. Let's move it over here to the left and let's increase the size for all your pet needs. We can do that by going in here and selecting the size you want or just with this button that just increases the size incrementally. This is, looks like a good size. Let's put it in italics and maybe change the font to something else. What would be the best thing to do? Yeah, this looks pretty nice, Calibri Light. Okay, so Pets Palace and Purchase Order now look very similar. Maybe we can change Purchase Order a little bit. How should we change it? I mean, all of the formatting options are out here, up here, and let's see if there's any more formatting options. Uh, none in Insert, none in Page Layout, Formulas, none, Data, none, Review and View won't have any either. So let's go back here. And don't forget, we also have the dialog box that is dedicated to formatting, which is Format Cells. So let's maybe make this a different color, a lighter, more subdued color. Maybe a gray or a gold. How about this one? This looks a bit better. It's a bit understated. Maybe we want it to be a bit darker than that. So let's do that again. Make it just a bit darker. This one. Much better. Pets Palace. Let's change the font on this one too. Let's put it as Calibri. Let's these two are titled, so let's put them in bold. So as build two. Let's put this also in bold. Now, I don't know about you, but I really don't like Arial, the font. So I'm gonna change it to Calibri. Maybe increase the size one, one bit. It becomes a bit larger. Okay, this is starting to look much better. What else can we do? We can put total in bold again to indicate that that is an important number. But bold doesn't seem to be bold enough. Maybe we should increase the size a little bit. That looks better. And same with this guy. Actually, you can just copy the format over from total to the number total. Oh, look at what has happened here. This thing has become missing since I copied the, the formatting over. So let's add the right border here. What has happened here is that the right border has gone missing, possibly because I copied the format. Let's add that back in using right border. And we also want all these numbers to be, or sorry, rather this number to be in an accounting number or a currency number. Since we put accounting up here, we should put accounting down here, but we can also put currency. Tax rate is a percentage. So we can put that here with this sign, 5%. Subtotal, again, should be accounting. And the sales tax amount should also be accounting. Now sales tax, you see that it's given a 7.775. Now, 
we usually don't divide a cent into a half, which this would indicate seven dollars and seventy-seven and a half cents. So we want to get rid of that five. And switching it to accounting will do that automatically, but another way of doing that is through these buttons here. This will increase the number of decimals, and this will decrease the number of decimals. Oh, it's not letting you decrease. There you go, 7.78. And we switch this into an accounting format as well. Excellent. Let's move. This looks a bit odd, the 5% in all of these, among all these dollar signs. I wonder if there's anything we can do about it. How about if we put it in the center? Will that look any better? Not really. Let's see. It's already as a percentage. Okay, you know what? We'll leave it for now, but there's multiple things that can be done about it. And you can experiment with all those things using the home tab and the home ribbon within and all of the different functions up here. Thank you for your business down here. It's too far down. We should move that just a tidy bit up. So see what I'm doing now. I'm moving a text box rather than text entered in a cell. And Excel allows you to add text boxes as well, which allows you to put text in an, any, any location on the spreadsheet, not just in a properly defined cell. Okay, so what else can we do to make this a bit prettier? We can increase the size of the headings up here because it's the same size as the text down below. So this can be by one. Looks a bit better. I think it's starting to look pretty good at this point. We can keep on going and making tons and tons of more changes. But we can also stop here and send it out. Let's take a look at how it looks when you try to print it. Looks really nice. Looks like a very professional invoice or a purchase order rather. Let's go back to home and one thing I really want to point out is that formatting in Excel is an exercise of trial and error. You really have to know what you kind of want to do and then you go about figuring out a way of doing it. After the first couple of times you do it this will become second nature. Just go in and take a look at all of the different options available and you and put them together in a way that makes sense to you and makes and meets your needs. Excel is quite powerful and it will let you format in any way you want really. It will let you do a lot of things. You just have to experiment and find out.